Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. And we're zooming in and focusing in a lot more, a little more, a huge ton more into the mindset, the relationship the drama and the trauma that ensues when you're in a relationship with a female psychopath. I've received a number of inquiries as well as a lot of viewer comments and requests to zoom in and focus in a little bit more in depth on this personality type, particularly as it pertains to close and intimate relationships. Now, this can be also a mother figure. This can be a colleague at work. It could be a neighbor, it could be a sibling, it could be a romantic interest. You know, generally I find the most experiences um, that our viewers have shared have been either in intimate relationships, um, family members, particularly that of a mother, as well as colleagues or coworkers or bosses. So it's important to understand that a female psychopath, number one, will engage in very subtle but very powerful manipulation, especially in the beginning of the relationship. And then it ensues to be much more blatant, obvious, or overt signs of manipulation, especially that of gas lighting and brainwashing, meaning that they flip your world upside down and inside out. You can't stop thinking about them. It's the ruminations that become the most pressing and the most dangerous I issue. No matter where you're at in your life, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, this could be occurring for decades and it just ravages you inside as well as in your physical body. So it's very important that you understand the seriousness of this type of manipulation and get away and out and cleanse from your system as soon as possible. And when I say this, it is to people who are unequivocally, no doubt, addicted to this person. In other words, they're addicted to the feeling that this person gives them, particularly that of hyper arousal. And I talk very much on the channel about hyper arousal, uh, especially when it comes to a psychopath. So hyper arousal means overstimulation of the physical body as well as the emotional body and the psychological body. And then the spiritual body, however, is oftentimes left untouched, but is still made impure or confused and fogged when you're in this relationship in, you know, in over your head. It becomes very overwhelming, but this overwhelming feeling of hyper -stimul stimulation, hyper arousal, and as well as the confusion, especially that of communication, that can be very sort of tension producing, which is designed to get you ruminating and break you down so you're constantly and always thinking about them. And this is also, which is set up in the physical body, the emotional body and psychological body in the strength and the profound hold that it gets on people like an addiction. So just like an addiction, we might hear about people who can't work they can't sleep, they need a fix, they'll sell off their property, they'll disown their family, um, they'll let their physical health go to shambles, they'll let their house go to shambles, they're, they won't take care of themselves physically, you know, they don't change their clothes, their hair is a mess, they are psychologically unemployable, you know, they're just out of it, and, or, you know, they can, you know, then develop these behaviors of, physical addiction. So, you know, overeating, over drinking, over drugging, can't get off the phone, can't get off the text, are living in a constant fear and hyper arousal state. So the hyper arousal oftentimes begins when the female psychopath sort of really seduces you and gets you transfixed, meaning really latched and hooked on like a hook, ball and sinker in your physical body. So it can be the psychopathic stare, that gaze, where they're just looking into your eyes and saying nothing, but yet saying everything. So their eyes, these sort of, you know, it's like this, you know, it can either be a real slithery look, you know, where it's like this and their eyes are, you know, 
just sort of glazed over looking. But oftentimes it's the difference between what is moving around the eye sockets and what is not. So usually like a genuine smile, it lights up your whole face and you're like, hey, how's it going? So good to see you. And like your whole face is lit up. That's a genuine, authentic smile and look. However, when you're with a psychopath, it's like their mouth, mouth is moving, but their eyes are not. So the eyes around here, you know, are kind of dulled down. And it's kind of like this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of, you know, rather than smiling, it's like, you know, the mouth is moving, but the eyes aren't. And then oftentimes the way that they twist their body will be very different than the way a natural body will move. So they'll begin to, you know, kind of hold their, hold their body and like hold on to things and then just kind of do with their wrists and like their neck and, it's just like, they're just kind of like, you know, always, and then, you know, are moving with their backside always to you, um, making their body almost in the shape of like an S. So they'll also, you know, move their body around in strange ways, oftentimes to mimic things like letters or pictures, um, other sort of, you know, like they'll just spell things out with their body and you don't even realize it. Like if their name is Jennifer, you know, then they're holding their body like a J, you know, they're kind of like always doing this. So you've got this big J always looking at you, or if they're, you know, begins with M, you know, then they're always like doing this. So they're implanting these messages in you subconsciously. Part of the hyper arousal is these odd manipulative sort of body languages that you would not, you don't register on a conscious level. So it's what's going through the mind subconsciously that sets up this hyper arousal and it can be very titillating or sexual in nature so in other words they will use because they don't experience things like fear love guilt remorse connection uh, uh, freedom you know they don't feel these emotions the way a typical usual person human humane <laughs> person being does. So they don't, they don't feel, they have a high tolerance of pain. So in other words, if you try to have a, a battle or a spat with them, they don't feel anything. I mean, they just, they don't feel anger. They don't really feel fear. They will get rage where they'll be all of a sudden really aggressive and do something over the top, which is rage and just sort of um, nothingness. So they're always putting on an act. They're always putting on a show. They're always putting on this manipulation. Everything is a game to them. So they will break you down subconsciously, oftentimes at the unconscious level where you don't recognize it. So for example, um, you know, they will use their, their body once again to implant things on you subconsciously. Um, you know, rolling their head, like flinging their hair when they're like just putting on a, you know, getting a coffee cup, um, just strange, you know, body flex movements where they're armoring their, you know, sh arching their back or once again, showing their backside when they're just changing the channel. It's like they're always in the hyper arousal mode. And so especially, you know, that is the gaslighting where they then, you know, say things to you and like, look you in the eye, you know, and then like hold you by the waist and, you know, um, talk about, you know, like toilet paper is so soft and squishy, you, you know, and it feels so good. And then they're squeezing you at the same time. So they're implanting these subconscious messages that you're like toilet paper, you know, and then they'll then later, you know, you know, talk about rubbing one out or something like this, just really sort of in getting in your, your subconscious. So this is very, actually very dangerous, I feel, and very lethal, meaning, because you don't, it's once it's so, you're hyper aroused, so hyper seduced. And then, you know, the physical movements on, you know, the sexual parts, which hyper arouse, you know, using their tongue, using their face, you know, using their hands to hyper arouse you. And oftentimes, you know, I'm to the point of not completing or not having a give and take. So, and, you know, They'll ask you like, well, you're out in public, you know, if they don't, if you don't mind doing this, you know, and then they're like rubbing their nose on you, you know, like they're an animal, um, very animalistic hyper arousal. And 
It gets you to the, where you're always, always, you know, sexually aroused and addicted. So this is not a healthy state. It is not healthy, although the, the supply, the target, see, because they know it's not healthy for the body to be hyper aroused sexually all the time. That is where the addiction really gets set up. And then, you know, it's set up that the female will know, unequivocally know that the effect that they're having because they'll be watching you and observing because they don't really feel sexual attraction to people. The psychopath will tell you that they are asexual, meaning not really sexual, but they will have this type of relationship when they're trying to break someone down and get something from them. So if it's intimate, you know, intimacy um, from the female psychopath, it'll be either a place to live, um, a, you know, money. There's something parasitic that they're wanting from you or can, can just be the thrill of the conquest. In other words, the psychopath engages in high risk, high sexual um, behavior. And this oftentimes is with money, very, you know, very reckless with, with people's money, um, you know, either giving to them or taking, you know, getting things like your debit card, your credit card, your login information, um, your groceries, um, your clothing, doing strange things with all of these, um, putting clothing where it doesn't belong, putting physical objects where they don't belong. And then you're like, you know, and then it's then then paired with, connected with this hyper arousal. So then, in other words, then the mind becomes twist and contorted where everything is hyper sexualized. So everything becomes sexual. The lamp becomes sexual. The bird becomes sexual. This thing, which is just like a carving, becomes sexual. Everything is hyper aroused. What is an example? You know, it would say, you know, I just, you know, your bud is just, you know, da, 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 you know, just every physical, every physical object that becomes hyper aroused and this becomes then, you know, I want a shot of you. And this is like a glass, you know, this is like, you know, they, it is then twisted and contorted. So it breaks you down and then you're, they then hook you day in and day out with this hyper arousal. So you really can't, you know. It's like an excitement and fear, which is really what I feel a chemical high of chemicals, which are not meant to be combined. So it's because it's an hyper arousal and then paired with violation of your boundaries, both your, your, your protective boundaries, as well as your standards. So they degrade the psychopath will tell you they will disrespectfully, you know, respectfully disrespect you. In other words, it'll look like love. It'll look like attraction. It'll look like they're your colleague, you know, or whatever. But then they will twist on you behind your back, you know, smear campaign you, um, talk about you, try to get you fired, try to get you in trouble, um, break you down financially where you could almost be homeless or homeless. And then you know, out on the streets with no job, with no family, because they will break down your values of what you value and, and they'll cloud it up so that you cannot see it anymore. You can't see your family as a person because this, this psychological combination of chemicals is so brainwashing you that your normal neural network that fires and wires together, you know, your your traditions, your family traditions, your birthday, your Easter, your Christmas, da, 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 your Hanukkah, whatever it is, no longer, pay, it pales in comparison to this hyper arousal. And then the quote unquote future that this person tries to lay out for you. But it's really a house of despair. It's a house of fear. It's a house of terror when that you really begin to expose them and the degree to which they have manipulated and fooled you and deceived you. So the, um, the asexualness, meaning they're not really interested. They don't have relationships. Psychopaths, as much as strange as it may be difficult to phantom, they don't really connect to others. They do not have a heart connection. They do unequivocally do not connect to others. Um, they do not have 
a connection, a warmth, um, a value system. It is all about what they can get on the outside. So it's all a play and act. There's no genuine, you know, intimacy there. Um, it is just to fool and deceive and it's to win. It is all they want to do is go for the win. So they don't care that you, what happens to you, that you're fearful, you know, unequivocally, it's going to lead to a smear campaign where they talk about you behind your back. If it's at, at the workplace, you know, to your face, they'll be working on a project behind the scenes. They're dating so-and-so. They're telling such and such to the boss. They're going out for dinner. They're going on the weekend. They're meeting their kids and slowly but surely it'll, you know, it'll, it'll be depleted and you will become a nobody. And what's very scary is when you see the degree to which they do not feel anything towards anybody. When you see that and you see the mask fall, you're like, oh my God, you know, I never knew this could be a person. I mean, the degree, the depth, the severity, the extent to which they deceive and they go all out and lie, really, it kind of supersedes the amount and degree to which any person in the female generally is not like the male in that I would say it's violent criminology. So in other words, you know, you hear about people who are incarcerated. Generally, you know, those psychopaths in that system is a high percentage. They say somewhere like around 20 to 30 percent. You know, who knows? Um, but the female oftentimes is not in that, that prison system, the therapy system. Oftentimes they're misdiagnosed as narcissistic. But the degree to which they can hurt and that they're not confronted because, you know, a woman would never do this. A woman would be protected. You know, women's rights, people tend to be a little bit softer on a female and not believe that a female would do this. So oftentimes they, you know, they just slip through the cracks. They, they go undetected because the woman would, you know, a woman wouldn't do this. You know, that's not like your typical woman. I mean, you think you know, a woman would never do this to another because they're supposed to be the emotional creature. They're supposed to be the nurturer. They're the ones that have the babies, you know, they're the ones who get, you know, raise the child, you know, you know, you know, our directive of their schooling or their religion. I mean, you just, you can't, it doesn't assimilate. It doesn't come together the way you think it would. Um, and so oftentimes they, that's the problem is that you know, they can just appear so sweet and innocent. The qualities that you would be attractive to a female, you know, um, the degree to which they can lie, you know, the baby face, you know, they'll be using, you know, that, mm, you know, sort of baby face, you know, but it's all the while seductive. So there's nothing innocent about these people, although they get off as such, um, you know, and so that's, you know, part of the compounding and more difficult issue, I would say, that separates the male from the female. Um, and what else? I mean, it's the whole idea that, um, you know, they're luring you into, it's like a Spanish fly trap. I mean, you get stuck. You cannot get yourself away. They get you so hyper aroused. And then also the communication where words and meanings are confused you know, and the way that they'll pair their body language with the communication, you know, squeezing their chest together and then opening up, you know, a cookbook. Is this the recipe? You know, and they're like falling out of their clothing and you're supposed to be looking at the recipe, but yet you're looking at their cleavage or likewise things with their backside, you know, just planting things, objects, phones, scarves, whatever it is, the way that, you know, the way that they dress, will hyper arouse the non-sexual to become sexual. So, you know, um, and the, the, the way that they will use, um, things like their clothing, not as just a, a you know, creative expression, but it is a way to hyper arouse. So in other words, they will twist and contort the meaning of things. Um, you know, the way that they'll talk about color and just like, you know, do this, you know, and like just stretch things out and like, they'll just, um, you know, for example, like the color of this shirt, which is like a beige, you know, this will all of a sudden then be combined with some sort of sexual meaning. Like, you know, you know, when you do this to me, you really mix me up and, you know, it's just, then they'll talk about, you know, having certain situations, you know, and then it'll be like a combination of, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be like disgusting here, but 
it's just, it's like this, it's this constant. And then people get addicted to this sort of fantasy, sort of seduction. It's almost like um, a sense of sexual humor or sexual play. Um, and then, you know, and then the paranoia and fear then, which then comes with them betraying you, you know, when you expose them, you know, you find them with somebody else. You see that they've got two or three phones, two or three, um, you know, uh, IDs or, you know, multiple layers of relationships that don't make sense. You know, they have a family, but they're cheating or they tell you one thing and you find out they're not capable of that. You know, they've lied about their income. They've lied about their job position. They lied about what they live. They don't show you ever any pictures. You know, there's, it can be very, you know, once you then piece it together and then you realize you're dealing with just a poof, a vapor, like a, a, a just a complete dissipation of an individual and then the time lost. And then the way it, the way it's changed the way that you're thinking then is particularly difficult. Um, because they've changed the way that you think and relate about things. So it's like you always want to watch their, their next move. No one else is like them. Everyone else seems to be worthless. Everyone else seems to be unexciting, boring, you know, and that you kind of always thought you were always going to live this way. And, you know, this person seemed to be the perfect ultimate and that no one else compares. And so then you find yourself sort of out of, out of control, hyper aroused and still trying to stay at the ready for them if they come back. So it's, it's just like they're, they're, they're laying, you know, you're keeping yourself open for if they come back, you know, because your body is so rehearsed and so memorized by this addiction that it seems wrong to let them go. You know, in other words, you, it's the lesson learned. Well, the lesson learned is that you need to start calming down and getting out of this hyper arousal. Start talking yourself down instead of talking yourself up. The paranoia, the smear campaign, it's all designed to keep you stuck, transfixed, hooked, hook, line, and sinker to keep you always watching them. The key with the psychopath, once they get involved, is they want you to always, always be thinking about them while you're working, showering, cooking, driving, sleeping, waking, planning, whatever it is. They want you to always have them, you know, running through you like a broken record. It's very sick. It's very sadistic. They know what they're doing. It's unequivocally a deliberate and calculated strategy that they use to wear you down to the point where you cannot even function anymore. People get so worn out that they are diagnosed with adrenal fatigue, post-traumatic stress syndrome, disability, unemployment, divorce, um, alienated from their children, alienated from their values, dehumanized. You know, people really, really get messed up. And this is unequivocally what I would feel, and I think a lot of viewers who have encountered this, it's unequivocally at a, at a criminal level. So it's not like what most people... Oh, well, you know, they were just having an affair and they're just this way and they're just very dominant and they're just, this is their personality. This is just who they are. No, you're, you're not dealing with that. You're, you're dealing with someone who is psychopathic. They are intraspecies predators. Predators meaning like who's going to win, the lion or the gazelle? You know, the lion is going to win and they are not attractive. And so the whole problem is the addiction and being attracted and like the hyper arousal and paranoia and fear that gets you ruminating and focusing is exactly what they want. I mean, they want you where they can get you. They want you in the palm of their hand. But the problem is you're not in your own body. You are not in your right mind. You are not in your right focus. You have not come into where you need to be. In fact, this person is going to drop kick you into some lonely uh, field with nothing but prickers, stickers, 
and you know getting scratched up and banged up it's going to it's going to really if you stay with it it's going to scar you it's really really going to scar you and not leave only internal scars but physical you know physical visible scars i mean it's going to get that out of control and no this is not the cool thing to do they are not the you know the fantasy girl they are not um the you know the the uh, ceo female boss that you you know that everybody looks up to they are unequivocally destructive human uh, lookalikes. I mean, that's all. They're they're not human. That is what I'm trying to impress upon you. These people are not. You are not getting what you know you see. You are not getting what you see. This and the fear. Of course, it. You know, this is. Can uh, I have a lot of viewers who are you know problemed by stalking, stalking behavior. I mean, this needs to be reported to the police. This needs unequivocally to be addressed. This unequivocally needs to be, you know, whether it's cyber billing, bullying, stalking, you know, you need to get professionals in on this case if it's gotten to this level. You unequivocally need to stop the madness. You unequivocally need to stop the ruminating, the, you know, the fantasy. You're, you know, because you need to go no contact, no phone, you know, no phone number, no Facebook, taking down the Facebook, take, you know, whatever it is, take, if, if they're on your Facebook, change your Facebook, dis, delete your account, delete your email, delete your social security number, get a new one or whatever, you know, wherever you're living. If you have some sort of identifier for your system, tell them, you know, I've encountered a very, um, hazardous person who's doing X, Y, and Z to me in ABC. You know, I need unequivocally to change my phone number. I need to protect um, my address. I need to uh, file a restraining order. I need to report this to Facebook. I need to report this for cyberbullying, cyber stalking, um, civil case. I mean, begin to get the law on your side. Talk to people who are professional, people who get this, people who can protect you and help you to salvage what you have left so you're not inherently scarred. The addiction is not cool. It, you know, your identity, oftentimes people who are addicted have an identity that they are, you know, I've, I've had a lot of viewers who feel like the most handsome man in the world. They have the best whatever, whatever with them. They have the best vacations, if you know what I mean you know, ruminating, ruminating, ruminating. They've, you know, liquidated their accounts. They've liquidated their mortgages. They've liquidated their title on their car for this person. That should give you a sign that you are in trouble with this person. In No, it doesn't make you from nerd to bad guy, from nerd to beauty queen. It doesn't make you from you know, social low light to social highlight, you know, it, it does not do this for you that you think it is. It's unequivocally the opposite. Don't be afraid to look at the objective reality and see the, the problem. The problem also with people who stay stuck is I have all the time in the world, you know, pretty soon we'll stop. And then that time, you don't understand that to get rid of this addiction, it unequivocally requires no contact with them, with people who they associate with. You need to, you know, and if you share friends with them, I'm sorry, but it's time to go G-O. It's time to get a new group, a new clique, a new posse, a new, you know, hangout group. You need to get away. You need to get away. I'm sorry, but that is the best medicine. That is the only medicine that you, you know, to get free, to get liberated from this sort of addiction that has a hold on you. Have you seen the rehab groups? Have you seen the programs? They are where you have to live in, you know, stay in a hospital. You know, we're talking severe mental problems because of these individuals, because of the ruminations, the brainwashing and the gaslighting, the self-doubt, the, the, you know, 
the, you know, turning yourself inside out, upside down, not knowing yourself anymore, not knowing yourself without this person. You unequivocally need to have rigorous honesty with yourself and grab the bull by the horns. And you need to know unequivocally that it's the right thing to do. It is right to get off the heroin. It is right to get off the crack. It is right to get off the addiction with this person. This person does not make you a better person. It's unequivocally going to eat you from the inside out. And I, I say that with the utmost seriousness. And the people who think that they have all this time in the world, you don't understand that to detox what from these people can unequivocally take at a minimum, minimum of 18 months. If you've been with this person for years, you know, it's going to even take longer. And the problem is that the intrusion, the intrusive thoughts are going to continue. The intrusive dreams are going to continue. After you go no contact, you might as well get started on it now. Get started on it now. Go no contact. Get rid of them out of your system. Unequivocally, you need to follow the healing tools that I discuss here on the channel that are particularly in place for people like you who have been seduced, broken down, and belittled by these individuals to be made to feel into nothing unless you're hyper aroused and addicted. So don't be fooled by a psychopathic, you know, melodrama, psychodrama, uh, you know, addiction. It is not, you know, your life will be restored. It'll be a better life. And oftentimes it's to get you into your true life purpose once you rid them. So you need to begin the art. You need to begin the music. You need to begin the new job. You need to begin the new house, the new apartment, the new bedding, the new look, throwing out everything that they've touched, you know, getting them deleted from your accounts, speaking to the authorities, speaking to a counselor, getting yourself into rehab, whatever rehab means for you. You've seen the Alcohol Anonymous getting, you know, go to an Alcoholics Anonymous me meeting wherever you live. Find a meeting where addicts go. Learn what addiction means. Learn that this has then been set up in your physiology and that this might be a lifelong issue for you. How would you like that? How would you like to have lifelong scarring because of an individual? I'm sorry, but that is not the way to go. Your life, whatever set you up there, it's important for you to dive in and look at your upbringing or your self-image and see how you were then low-hanging fruit for this individual to just come in and swoop you up, take a bite out of you, take several bites, and leave you dangling with you know no fruit or production in your own life. You know, understand the extent and the degree to which this has had a hold on you. Get objective. Get and just repeat over your mind over and over. I can do this. I'm doing this. 